Members on both teams that were still here for both of those games remember that 16-15 win for the Big Red at the JMA Wireless Dome and immediately a face-off violation against Mason Cohn will give the Big Red the first possession here. And, and this is an important storyline for us is this face-off game. Syracuse, very strong face-off team and Cornell uh, is, has been specialty teams uh, whereas Cornell may have a little bit of an advantage on the offensive side but very minimal Ever all the way up top, 30 to shoot. Loses the defender and gets checked on the way in by Riley Figueres, and the ground ball goes into the stick of Wilms. of long stick mids in the entire nation, San Alexa. And here comes this vaunted Syracuse offense. Inside the shot, and the score immediately for Sam English. And Cornell is no stranger to Sam English. Him and Jake Stevens running on that Princeton midfield line for many, many years, and Sam English comes back to haunt Princeton once again. And it was just Excuse good me, ball movement in the substitution <laughs> game there. Syracuse was able to create the unsettled situation and create the higher percentage shot. Michael Leo will take Charlie Box behind Cage. This is an area Cornell has struggled a little bit with Penn, was able to take advantage out of the midfield. And Christian Moulet was looking for an option right now. That's one of the lowest marks in the nation. This Cornell ride has been so, so effective the entire year and it almost produced another turnover there. English directed to stay on side before heading off for a sub. As the second midfield comes out for Syracuse. Here's Joey Spolina. And a rip and a score from Owen Hiltz. The ball moves so fast for Syracuse on the offensive end, and you saw it right there. Again, a problem for Cornell in the substitution game. Didn't quite have the matchups all set. Cornell defense was scrambling a little bit, uh, and then Syracuse able to kind of expect that number to stand for both sides. Christian Moulet to Lehigh transfer. All the way up top. Wants to rip from Owen Hiltz. It's a quick 3 0 lead for the Syracuse Orange, and it's two goals from the lefty sniper, Owen Hiltz. And again, there's an opportunity where you get the defense rotating. You're gonna see here, they break some down, Cornell, slow to come, but then two guys came, and then the pass directly right in front of the cage, and that's where you love to be if you're a shooter. Take too much more advantage of the matchup, we'll get it right back. Slide needs to come quickly, and it does. Cursed will get it on cage, but it looks like it either hit pipe or hit the ground, and now he loses the ball, and Mark picks it up in the crease. Not sure that's a great possession for Cornell. You want to be able to, you know, maybe let your defense settle in a little bit. Continues to pass the ball with such speed. Jason Singer against Spelina on a good first save for Matt Tully beating and meeting Spelina high. We start in a 3-3, get the ball rotating. Stevens thought about it. Leo right on the doorstep. And Michael Leo. Puts it past Tully and Syracuse already with a 4 nothing lead. And this is what you expect from the high-powered Syracuse offense. And just move it around the outside. Find it the base. Here we go. Looks through. Cornell defense just lost track of him. And Rice stopping Finn Thompson with the shot. 14 seconds left on the man up. Uh, second save for Tully on the day. 10 seconds. Hiltz thought about it. Five seconds. Joey Spolina has hands free, and you can't give Joey Spolina hands free. It this is a 5 nothing lead early on for the Cuse. Yeah, and this is about the worst start you could, you could ever expect if you were Cornell. Syracuse has really come out and given Cornell everything they can, more than they can. Short stick on Christian Moule. Moule thinks about taking box cage. And now Fawn Thompson had his defender hang, hung up and it looked like a cutting ball couldn't quite find its target. Picked up by Leo. Leo. Spelina got his yeah. defender hung here. Singer is hung up against Spelina. And the shot in front of Cage and it just squeaks past Tully. Finn Thompson's on the board. 6-0 Syracuse early on. And the Orange are putting on an absolute clinic here at Ithaca. And it's just... I, I don't know what happened here. He just 
just a little turn, right? There was nothing complicated. There was no pick. They're just taking scoring opportunity here. Yeah, that's Syracuse has done a nice job of not letting Cornell get inside at all. And the ball comes loose. Kirsten Long trying to fight for it. Figueres shuffles it back, and eventually it goes back to the orange. Syracuse playing with so much tempo right now, offensively and defensively. And in transition, Syracuse has been absolutely excellent as well. However, English can't quite find it. Between the legs shot! That's a score for Billy Twan. It is seven nothing Syracuse on a highlight reel shot from Twan. And I tell you, everything is going Syracuse's way right now. They got out in transition here, and the ball just kind of ends up up in the air. Wait for the. Cornell, the this is Cornell knowing they got to yeah, try and big red fan who gets the back up first. But yeah, that definitely looked like Will Mark was a little bit closer. Fifteen to shoot here for Cornell. Initiating with Kurse. Kurse gets around his defender. And Kurse yeah. gets shoved to the ground. Flag flies. That's on Billy Dwan. That's going to be a push with possession. Only five seconds on the shot clock. Kurse trying to move quickly. CJ Kurse gets the bouncer past Will Mark. And that's the first goal of the game. It comes from the ever prolific CJ Kurse. You know, you just sense that he wants to try and put the team on his shoulders right here. And, and here's an opportunity, right? Here he comes. He forces the push. And then he takes his time, he's patient. He knows he's not got much time here on the clock and just goes right to his strong left hand, keeps coming, gives himself that extra step to greatness and converts. Goldstein passes up top to Firth. Wearing the fabled 51 jersey that Jeff Teep made famous with the big red. And now Michael Long's got the short stick and huddle. He'll take him behind X. Michael Long on the short stick will score. And now the bleeding stops a little bit for Cornell. And at the end of the first quarter, you sense that this is huge for the Big Red to gain some momentum back in this game. He just takes advantage of the matchup here, right? Gets it behind. He's able to come with his left hand. Almost, a, almost was a little bit of a fake pass. Like there was that little bit of a quarter. Can really help you build momentum. You never want to give one up. And if you can get one, you know, that's great. And it looks like we've got a foul. There is some sort of foul being called because there is not going to be a face-off, it looks like. But here it is, so they just threw the flag now. There's an unsportsmanlike penalty that's been called on Syracuse. We're not sure exactly on who. It's got to be some sort of bench penalty, it looks like. Well, and if you're Cornell, with 15 seconds left and the face-off disparity... Different staff member, but otherwise, no matter what this is, you can see... So many players here on this Syracuse sideline are still arguing with the officials about what exactly the call is. And, and I there was there was nothing huge what we're just getting here from the production booth. There was one one-minute penalty being called and a three-minute penalty being called. So Syracuse is going to go down four on six for at least the next minute, and then we'll go six on five for the next three. Yeah, and we'll have to see... Which what's can score multi-point goals in college lacrosse, but you can certainly take advantage of a long extra man here. A huge momentum swing both ways. And it makes, obviously, if a Cornell goal comes quickly, and it will, as CJ Kurse got absolutely flattened on that shot attempt. Now it's now 7-3, and what I was gonna say is, now that because this Cornell comes quickly, a lot's right. They got Mason Cohn to win this face-off clearly for Syracuse yep. because he has no wing help. Yeah, and Cornell just is able to, to move this through. And actually, um, you know, you, you look at got the last extra man goal on. Long thought about a rip from deep. Here's Willem Furt. Cornell staying patient here, 26 on the shot clock. They can wind this down again because of the non-releasable penalty. Cursed. Finds Long in the middle, and Michael Long makes it four straight goals for Cornell. Nice patience there by Michael Long. He catches it and changes hands, watches this, how he's sort of coming to the ball a little bit with his right hand. No, left, he switches left and then goes to right. That change of hand then shoots down low. He is now released. We're at full strength. Those were two unsportsmanlike penalties, and I think Syracuse can be happy to come away with only Cornell scoring two goals from those penalties. I think, I think if, yeah, you could say that. I think if you're Cornell, you're happy to get the two. And you think 
Does this maybe just slow the tempo down in this game, which I think is what Cornell would like most ultimately? Joey oh, Spolina! <laughs> oh, Joey Spolina! The stick skills of number 22 on display once again. Just just gets his almost like a post-up situation, right? He comes on, he comes on, and he just gets to this point. He waits, he waits, he waits, and then pulls it behind the back with his right hand, stops the Cornell run at three in, in the area. I, I think that's a tough call. To me, That that's a lacrosse play. If you look at this again, right? He comes through, right? Arms are down low. It's the shoulder. It didn't come head to head. He didn't lower the head. To me, that looks like, no matter when the, the penalty uh, expires, they're still going to have to get a Here shot. Here is the penalty expired. Now six on five for 20 seconds on the shot clock. And like you said, you got to get something on Cage now. Owen Hiltz will be first. Into the middle for Finn Thompson. Can't get a shot off. There's only seven seconds on the shot clock. Five seconds. Owen Hiltz has to let one rip, and it's right into the stick of Matt Tully. And now... Defender hung up. We try to get, excuse me, I try to get our camera right. Tully, Tully's got out of cage. That's an aggressive move from Tully. He'll get back in. Here's Michael Leo, all the way up top against Aiden Blake. Slide comes. Christian Moulet. No one else. Found a cutter, found a man inside, excuse me, but Finn Thompson took his eyes off the ball right when he received it and couldn't quite push it on cage. Here's Cornell in transition. Michael Long, all the way to Aiden Blake. Finn Thompson's caught out on defense. Goldstein all the way up top. Brendan Stop. Brendan Stop. The bouncer. Brendan Stop at the long ball goal. And I tell you, the thing that has happened and changed this game is that this tempo is more to Cornell's liking. It's not that Cornell wants to play slow, but they don't want to necessarily be all unsettled situations here. You're happy to take your ground ball up and out. They will get the clear, though, over to Jake Stevens. But like we said, clearing can be a factor in this game with teams only clearing 81.5% against Cornell this season. And that's not a particularly high number for defenses. Owen Hiltz, oh, Owen Hiltz, the fast hands makes it a 10-5 lead for Syracuse. And that's one I think Matt Tully would like back. Um, can't let, like to see here if, if there was a, a screen that came in front of him because it, it looked to me like it wasn't a super hard shot. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm not I'm sure he saw it. There was a, a lot of, in front of him the there. Sea of white body. Definitely slowing down as Luke Roa will battle against Hugh Kelleher, who's been caught out on defense. 27 on the shot clock. Up top to Jackson Burke whistle. And the short sticks matchups are what every team has tried to attack against Cornell. And now Jake Stevens will fast it off. A free shot for Luke Roa, who was all alone. And now it's an 11-5 lead for Syracuse. Yeah, sort of a, a not an, a great angle, but he's got so much space there. And he, you know, when I watched it live, it seemed like he was a little further from the <laughs> elementary school tonight at a parent-teacher conference. Yeah. And the kids love those because then they get a day off from school. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what Cornell has right now, the Cornell students on spring break. Here's A.J. Nikolic. Nikolic went all alone to cage. A.J. Nikolic, flags fly, no. goal should stand, and yes, the goal does stand for A.J. Nikolic. Now the question is, what's the foul going to be? Could very easily be a push from behind. And that should institute an immediate man up for Cornell, if I recall correctly. Now let's see. Now it's probably going to be a push from behind, which would be a 30-second technical foul, which will get... Now part of that is because Cornell's converting on the offensive end. They can't get out into the break. Anguish thought about ripping one, decided to back up. Spolina around GLE with one hand. That's always so dangerous. Spolina right into the middle. He found Finn Thompson. Wow, that's a nice shot. Um, a, a good look. It seemed to me like he, he caught that very quickly and was able to put it in. Didn't have a ton of angle, but it all happened so quickly. Watch how Spolina comes back and just looks inside really quickly. I, that's a really nice goal by... I don't think I want to stand in too many front in front of too many shots against Owen Hiltz. This is dangerous, though. Moulet with the short stick. Luke Gilmartin. 
but one of the most prolific attackers. As Michael Leo will fire that shot low and past Matt Tully. Oh wait, this, did this goal get wiped out? This goal might have gotten wiped out. I'm not sure exactly. They're, hold on everything right now. You nope, can see the, the, Leo just kind of turn his head back in some confusion. The ref scoring. Cornell's probably already run out of time. And Syracuse's defense much improved. A oh, big reason because of John O'Dearna coming over from Manhattan to quarterback that defense as the defensive coordinator this season. An opportunity to stop the bleeding here for Cornell. Two goal run for Syracuse so far. Michael Long will fire this over the shoulder of Will Mark. And Long just that that whole offensive set just seemed like he was he was ready to try and go to the goal and have an opportunity. Here he gets rid of the ball, sort of a little bit of action, come right back to him, and just blows it by Mark. Probably going all the way back to when Gary Gate was on the field in the late eighties, early nineties. Gary Gate now in his third season coaching the men of Syracuse. After a very, very successful career with the ladies as their head tenure. Spencer Wertheim pushes it past Mark. Now it's a two goal run for Cornell. And here we go, back and forth, back and forth. This has been the story of Cornell season all year long. Going on runs, stopping runs. And just a little, a little hidden ball trick that fooled no one. Um, but he comes down, gets into a good spot on the field where he likes to shoot with that left handed shot. But the big buffs continue to be so, so important for both teams. Silos back there out against Cone, and again, Cone wins it cleanly. And now, the Orange looking to move fast. They do, as Sam English will make it a 14-8 game. And again, Sam English loves scoring against Cornell. Boy, we don't get much chance to breathe in here, and mm -hmm. just a, a really nice face-off win there by Cone. So this is right here by the middle. It throws a little wrap check here. Yeah, that's called on Thompson. You can see Long immediately noticed it. It's a 30-second man up. 30-second technical for interference. So the call was a 30-second technical for interference, and C.J. Kirst will put Cornell back on the board. It's 14-5. Extra man Excuse goal. Excuse me, 14-9. Five-goal lead for Cornell. Extra man goal here for Cornell. Just They start with Kirst, top center. They get the ball moving around, and he just comes right through the middle. You know, it wasn't anything real, real He expected, right? Offense on offense on offense. And another crucial faceoff coming. Ball still up for grabs, and it looks like Sam Alexo might be the first one to it. And he is indeed trying to ward off Silos. And eventually gets the ball over to Randy Figueres with under a minute to go here in the second quarter. And Syracuse looking to move quickly, but the pass was a little bit too far for Stevens. And now Cornell will try her own risky pass, and it somehow finds C.J. Kirst. Now Cornell looking to move a transition. Michael Long will pass it off. Here is Spencer Wertheim! And I tell you, I, you, may, you may not have been able to he hear it, but I, I thought that C.J. Kirst was going to get killed. That <laughs> type of a buddy pass. And then watch this. I mean, Kirst just looks like he is going to get lit up. He's able to make the catch. He finds Michael Long, who just takes time, makes the defender have to make a decision to stop him with the ball, finds Wertheim, Wertheim, who puts it into the goal, gets Cornell. Joey Spolina wearing the Fable 22. Joey Spolina. That is textbook Joey Spolina. A single one-on-one -on -one dodge against Jason Singer. And Syracuse re-extends their lead to five goals. Just a patient dodge, right? He waited, got what he wanted, comes with his left hand, uses the pick, gets to five and five. You know, not bad defense. I mean, Singer's... Spolina being very, very patient, letting the play develop in front of him. Spolina still looking for an option. Nuss being patient as well in cage. 25 seconds on the shot clock. No options for 22. And boy, boy, the players inside just working yeah. hard to try and get open, but Cornell doing a good job communicating and switching. Spolina will go, slide from Gilmartin. Right there though is Luke Roa who gets it past Nust. And because of the slide, Roa takes advantage all alone and he'll make it a 16-10 game for Syracuse. 
and just an opportunity, just the patience, the patience, then they use the pick, they slip the pick, and he's able to just get the ball, come right around unguarded, put the bouncer. Leo's got the short stick matchup against Luke Gilmartin. He'll invert. Slipped a little. Gil Martin, the Syracuse native playing against his hometown college team. And a good stop from Nuss, stopping Leo right on the doorstep. From behind and see what he could create. Long with three goals and three assists. Here's Kelleher. Gets a slide. Figueres is going to get called for a flag. He doesn't like that call from the official. Long will score. That's four goals for Michael Long. And you hope if you're Cornell that they call this a one minute foul so that you can go on an extra man opportunity coming right out of this. Just the aggressive dodge here by Kelleher. There's the flag. He throws it right back to Long who steps in and just lets it fly. A ride from Cornell. That's the Cornell ride you expect to see. And here comes Cornell on the man up. And we mentioned it, right? It's this idea of it's one thing to, to win a faceoff statistically. It's another thing to be able to get the exit to be able to actually get the full possession. Here we see Syracuse is locking off CJ Curse. So Cornell have the opportunity to go uh, a five on four type. And you say, oh, CJ Curse, CJ Curse. Four goals for CJ Curse. Wow, that's, I, I tell you, that to get that kind of a goal like that, they assumed that Curse was that Curse was going behind to 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 um, to back up the cage and just sort of just got lazy for a second there and Curse cuts through the middle and gets the nice pass. Yeah, you could piece for each team in the third quarter. Again, I think that's the pace that uh, Cornell would like, and here's a faceoff violation called against John Mullen. So Cornell will have an opportunity. They go quickly. Mark Silos decided to go quickly. Right back, and they do. CJ Curse with another cause turnover. Casey. So one of the hidden talents of C.J. Kirst, cause turnovers. That is C.J. Kirst's 11th cause turnover of the year. You don't see 11 cause turnovers from a normal attackman, but C.J. Kirst is no normal attackman. Ryan Goldstein and Goldstein and a huge stop from Will Martin. He came into the start of the second half with only five. Goldstein got around his defender. Ryan Goldstein on the board once again. The fourth game for Ryan Goldstein in his young Cornell career. It's his ninth goal in a Cornell big red uniform. Just a speed dodge. He stayed patient with it. Took the first opportunity, pulls back, gets underneath the defender, switches hands to be able to protect his stick, gets inside, no slide comes. And from the cage. Looks like they're trying to go to Firth here. They did on the last possession. They try again here. Firth found Kelleher all alone. Why? Hugh Kelleher. Two goal lead. This is the Cornell lacrosse. The team of runs. They can let up runs, but they can go on big runs themselves. And this this is really the first time we've seen Kelleher get his hands free. Just the defense had sloughed all over to Firth, and that creates the opportunity for the step down. That's a huge slide coming in. And Goldstein picks the ball back up. Found long. Firth. Got around a man. Willem Firth Locked. shot deflected on the way in. Firth will pick it right back up. 30 seconds approaching on the shot clock. Kirst. Double came. Long all alone in the middle. Still has the ball. And Michael Long had it forced out. And a oh, flag is going to fly that's against costly. Syracuse. You see Spalina and Singer stick fighting with each other. Moulet all alone in the middle. Mule will put that shot wide. And here comes the man up opportunity here for the Syracuse Orange. I think the foul is going to be against uh, Ryan Goldstein. Goldstein is the one heading to the penalty for box. For a cross check. One minute foul. Well, actually, it's going to be on Keller. It went off a stick of some kind. Still 45 in the extra man here for Syracuse. So Syracuse may be catching a break here. Oh, S Stevens can't get a pass on target to Hiltz. That's a huge blunder there. Listen to Shokoff roar. Luke Gilmartin. It's a tough clear for him to make. And he'll get it over. It's a fresh 60 on the way. Michael Long still has the short stick. 
Can Cornell find Long on the short stick once again? He does. Well, on first foul, Michael Long on the short stick matchup. It is a one goal game in Ithaca. Firth has really, Firth has really been feeling it in this half. He's been initiating quite a bit. He comes off a of top center and he looks across the goal and he finds Michael Long, the makes Cornell the catch with his left hand, and we've got to have a timeout. Decides not to use it. We'll go up to Kelher. We're fine against Rice. Firth against Hoddle. Will and Firth got underneath and a great low stop from Will Mark. Kelleher there first for the backup. Fresh 60 coming for Cornell. 13th save of the game for Will Mark. They have just been riding Firth here. He, they just really like this matchup. And look what they're going to do. They're going to do. They're going to come right back to it again. Two assists for Willem Firth on this game. And then they're going to jodge the short on the opposite side. Wertheim against, Wertheim against Rice. Spencer Wertheim will get it up to Goldstein. Ryan Goldstein! Oh, Mark's what a save. save from Will Mark going down, reaching the stick up high. To One goal game in Ithaca. Cursed. One minute left. Wertheim! Bounce save by Mark. And into the crease for the Syracuse netminder. 15 saves for Will Mark. Make it 16 saves for Will Mark, who has absolutely come up clutch for the Orange at the end of this game. Aggressive ride coming out. 10-man ride coming up for Cornell. This 10-man so, so aggressive for Cornell. Still up for grabs. Sam Alexo loses it. Spencer Wertheim picks it back up. Gets it over to Firth. 24 seconds. All alone. Goldstein! We're tied! Wow. That was a ride that just never ended for Cornell. They just kept with it and kept with it and kept with it. Finally, they were able to create the turnover and a good opportunity there. A good move by Wertheim of looking down the field. And Goldstein makes no doubt about it after... I would tell you, Will. This face-off massive. Mason Cohn is 17 of 21 at the face-off X. Can't make it 18. Mark Silos picks it up. Will Coach Busek call time? Silos takes it. Mark Silos! Mark Silos <laughs> scores! Cornell has taken its first lead of the game with 10 seconds left. And you could see Connor Busick on the sideline was waiting to call a timeout, waiting to call a timeout. And he said, we got a chance to go to goal. And Mark Silos coming up with a big play. He gets his own ground ball and he just comes right down the side here just and keeps going. And no defender came to him, puts it up high. And now we're going to have a timeout here just to, if you're Syracuse. Ken Silos tie this up long enough. Ball squirts pass. Picks up to Stevens. Five seconds. English running. English got past the defender. And he got the defender. And he got it under. Wyatt Glass. We're all tied up at 17. Back at 1.1 second. We're most likely headed to overtime here in Ithaca. It was a, what clean, a, game. a clean, quick face-off win out to the wing. Stevens finds his former Princeton teammate, English, and just Aiden Blake just didn't get the hit on him when he came out to try and try and stop him. Sam English went. Obviously a big face off here to see who will get the first chance. A tie up between Cone and Silos, and it's knocked down and picked up by Jake Stevens. Will Coach Gate you need to use a timeout? I'd play it out. Only three goals for Syracuse in the second half. How much of that is because they do not have Pat Marsh on the sidelines? If you're just joining us, first of all, where have you been? Second of all, <laughs> the first quarter of this game, at the end of the first quarter, Pat Marsh was ejected from this game due to unsportsmanlike conduct, which seems like ages ago. Thompson found Michael Leo all alone. Aggressive slide coming from Matt Dooley. Timeout by Syracuse, and, and in again, some ways, that may have served Cornell well because yeah. that was close to a foul. Maybe up top. Here's English. Gets the slide. Now English has the box matchup. Got a roundup. Sam English. What a save from Lust. 
Big ground ball coming up. Stom had no idea where it was, but Gilmartin did. That's the fifth save for Wyatt Nuss coming into this game. With Don Dwan covering him. CJ cursed. Burst of speed. CJ cursed. Flag flies. Huge flag flying. Cursed. Over to Goldstein, who just missed the target. Oh, right. And Goldstein wants that one back. Yeah, he would like that one back because he had plenty, plenty to look at there. But Cornell will have an extra man. To the head. Do you decide to just run a little clock first so that if you do not convert, you don't give Syracuse any time left? Well, first, just missed high. Guess the answer to that is no. No. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Rory Graham. Initiating with six on five. The extra against, man specialist. Against the specially man down defense for Syracuse. Michael Long. Up top to Kelleher. Cursed. Over to Firth. Kelleher. Long. 30 seconds left on the man up. CJ Curse. Just and Mr. No White. Backer. Marcus, the first one there. Danny Cadigan was not there on the backup. And Syracuse can kill off the rest of the man up. I think Aiden Blake. This ball squirts out. Stevens looking to try and get there first, and he will. Again, both teams have a timeout again now that we're in this second overtime period. So Syracuse. Luke Roa up top. He'll take the short stick and Aiden Blake. Luke Roa got around Aiden Blake, and a huge stop from Wyatt Nust. A little bit of a weird pass, though, for Matt Dooley, and Dooley will pick it back up. Hounded by Blue Jerseys. He's forced out of bounds. Has to get this ball back. Ten seconds left for Cornell to clear. And they do with Stop coming around. CJ Kirst is all alone, but he'll settle. Joey Spelina against Jason Singer. Gets a screen. In the middle. Fitz Upson. A huge save for Nust. Absolutely that's hounded. That should be a hold. A hold. Yep. And Jack follows. Will secure the possession. Wyatt Nust has come up absolutely huge in this game for Cornell. Essentially, Cornell can hold for the final shot here in double overtime. Spencer Wertheim gets around Hoddle, gets a screen. Wertheim, all alone. CJ Kirst, all alone! CJ Kirst has won the game for Cornell! They went right to the cage. They liked that matchup with Spencer Wertheim against the short stick. And he has just a little throwback for CJ Kirst, who gets Cornell a huge. 18 to 17 win here at Sholkoff Field. Just a remarkable college lacrosse game. Offense at both ends in the first half, and here's Wertheim, takes on the dodge. He uses the pick, the throw back to Curse, who just steps in, lets it fly low, and beats Mark to give Cornell the 18-17 stunning come from behind victory here at Sholkoff Field. Syracuse led in the first quarter.